deny claims. Deny claims. Unum Provident would not agree to an on-camera interview, but vehemently denies that it sets goals to terminate claims. In a letter to Dateline, it says it does estimate claim results to project a business plan into the future, which may have been mischaracterized or misinterpreted by others. Also, it says that it will pay $3.6 billion in benefits this year, and that of all the people who filed claims with Unum Provident last year, only 2% were found to be not disabled. And it says it has a consistent record in paying claims. Unum Provident is more than just claims people and managers. It's also doctors, over 100 of them, doctors sworn to do no harm. Wouldn't a Unum Provident doctor stop the company from cutting off disabled people? Not according to this policyholder. If I could have every wish in the world, I'd, I'd wish that I could teach again and see my kids get older. Two wishes. Once a healthy, vibrant school teacher from Illinois, Rosemary Wright began suffering from a progressive, fatal form of emphysema. Even the smallest activity can leave her gasping for breath. Her doctors say the kind of emphysema Wright has is genetic. It's not from smoking. The same disease had already killed her younger brother, and now it's killing her. When Wright became too sick to teach, Unum Provident began paying her disability benefits. But two years later, just as in John Montano's case, the company cut her off. I opened that letter, and I couldn't believe it. I thought, why? I mean, this must be a mistake. Unum Provident based its decision on the opinion of a Unum Provident staff doctor, who not only never examined Wright in person, but disregarded the opinions of Wright's two doctors, both lung specialists who had examined her and found her totally and completely disabled. So how could a Unum Provident doctor help cut her off? Dr. Fergal McSherry, who doesn't know Rosemary Wright, worked for Unum Provident for a year and a half. He says it's more about the system than the doctor. Doctor, were they interested in your honest, objective medical opinion? No. McSherry says doctors at Unum Provident were pressured to write narrow medical reports to help the company deny benefits. We were a means to an end. And the end was? The end was denial. And if too many of their opinions favored the claimants, McSherry says doctors would be reprimanded, in his case, by his boss. I was told that I'd fallen off the career path. What did you feel you had to do to get back on their career path? You know, I was just going to have to do more of what the claims people wanted me to do. which was, was that? That was to make it uh, easy for them to deny the claim. Dr. McSherry sure. says, uh, like I'll other doctors inside. who work at Unum Provident, he succumbed to the pressure. Did you ever change a medical opinion because you were being pressured? Yes, I did. These were cases where, in your best medical opinion, you thought these people were either sick or impaired or disabled. You reversed your own best judgment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did that. I didn't want to lose my job. I didn't want to upset everybody around me and I try to play within the rules. McSherry says he did it only a couple of times and vowed never to do it again. Even so, if what he's saying is true, they got his medical soul. Yeah, I'm only human. I, I had, you know, I, I gave in once or twice. I just hope I didn't hurt somebody too, too badly. Unum Providence says it doesn't pressure doctors to terminate claims. So what happened to Dr. McSherry? He was fired from Unum Providence for what the company calls poor performance. It also says Dr. McSherry was forced to resign from other jobs for similar reasons. But McSherry says that losing those other jobs had nothing to do with his performance. And the real reason he was fired from Unum Providence was that he began standing up to the company, refusing to play along. In fact, five of Dateline's sources back up Dr. McSherry's story, specifically that doctors were pressured to help cut off benefits. Dr. McSherry is now suing Unum Provident. I don't have a problem with people setting targets, as long as those targets are reasonable 
and um, don't hurt people. Were these targets reasonable? No, not at all. Did they hurt people? They hurt people every day. They didn't just take the money away from me, but they took a sense of dignity away from me. After Unum Provident ended her disability payments, Rosemary Wright says she was forced to begin spending money she had saved for a lung transplant just to cover living expenses. Wright sued Unum Provident, which suddenly reversed itself, reimbursed her back benefits, and began paying her again. But Wright has not dropped her lawsuit and says the stress took its toll. I wasn't sleeping. You know, I was a wreck. And yes, I, last year was the sickest year I've ever had. I believe that they robbed me of a, of a whole, almost a year of my life. As for John Montano, the quadriplegic, he also filed suit against Unum Provident, and the company settled with him for an undisclosed amount of money. In the end, what was this company's promise worth? To me, nothing. Uh, their word, the way they operate, they're totally unethical. Unum Providence says it regrets how it handled the cases of Wright and Montano, but says they're exceptions. It also says it handles 400,000 new claims a year, and it does on occasion make a mistake. Yet in the eyes of at least one insurance commissioner, it may be more than an occasional mistake. There are some substantial problem areas. Georgia Insurance Commissioner John Oxendine told Dateline he began investigating Unum Providence disability practices more than a year ago. He says his investigation should be complete by the end of the year. Unless something radical changes, there probably will be some disciplinary action uh, based on what we have already found. Unum Providence says any problems in Georgia represent a small percentage of their overall claims, and it will do what is necessary to correct these issues. In the end, both Montano and Wright say no one should be treated the way they were treated. Cut off, abandoned by a company that had promised if the worst ever happened, it would be there for them. It's like stealing. They should be held accountable for that.